Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here on site at Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona. I'm at the Cisco booth, and I'm joined by Masoom Mir uh, from Cisco. And you are the, I have your title here, as SVP and GM of Cisco Networking Provider Mobility. What does that mean? What do you do here? So first of all, uh, thank you for being here. We are glad to be here meeting with so many customers, getting insight from customers. Our partners. It's good to be back, isn't it? And it's great yeah. to be yeah. back in person yeah. with uh, so many of our customers. Um, so obviously what I do in Cisco, I uh, run the business unit responsible for everything mobile, including our mobile IoT business, uh, our mobile core business, uh, and a lot of new things happening in this space like private 5G is also in my business unit. Yeah, it's interesting. If I were to think up a theme for the show, uh, obviously the big one's telco transformation, but the underlying theme is 5G. But yes. 5G uh, and both private 5G and 5G, public 5G right now. And, and that's kind of a, and so I want to talk to you about 5G. Um, but first, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there, I think, from customers around the difference between public 5G, private 5G, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, LTE, right? So what are the differences here and where would you use one versus the other? So why should we start? Maybe we should start with what we all have in our handset 4G and yeah. we also have Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 uh, in our offices and home. So obviously LTE provided broad coverage, a uh, lot of bandwidth on our handsets. Um, we use it every day. 5G is a natural evolution of 4G uh, from LTE to 5G. It's going to make the spectrum more efficient so we can get actually more bandwidth uh, uh, from, from the similar amount of spectrum. It's also a technology shift. It is cloud native in nature, so we can actually make this software more distributed. Uh, also, some of the new attribute comes with more predictability, lower latency, that right, makes right. it very appealing for mission critical enterprise needs as well. Now, one of the questions we get asked all the time, that well, Wi-Fi is wireless, cellular is wireless, okay, how do I compare yeah. 5G and Wi-Fi 6? You should not really compare. You should think about, we need wireless everywhere. Well, I hear all the time that it, people ask me, is 5G going to cannibalize Wi-Fi and get rid of it? Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, it's like every time what happened, we gave our customers and enterprises more bandwidth and more capabilities. As we made it useful, they consumed it more and more. We see 5G augmenting a lot of Wi-Fi deployment. So where exactly it is going to augment Wi-Fi? Obviously, Wi-Fi 6 coming with a lot more capacity, a lot more predictability, but still with Wi-Fi, we have distance limitation. One of the advantage with 5G is you can actually go longer because you can actually propagate a lot more power and you can cover long distance areas. The other areas of 5G in industrial settings, uh, Wi-Fi with extreme load conditions oftentimes has variable latencies. 5G can also augment Wi-Fi in those cases where you need very predictable latency for machine-to-machine -machine communication. Yeah, and, um, and, and thanks. And I, and I do think they're complementary. You know, obviously, Wi-Fi is near, reached near ubiquity today, right? And so it's a very good network of convenience for ad hoc use cases, but to me, 5G brings a lot of the predictability and reliability that you don't get from Wi-Fi. Right, and so, uh, but, so let's assume then that they're going to coexist, right? Um, what's the main differences between 4G and 5G, though? And uh, you know, I think they are fundamentally different technologies. Uh, but you know, 5G being cloud native, what does it let operators do and businesses do that they couldn't do with with LTE? So let let's break it down into two way. One is on the operator side, and then let's talk about enterprise. Okay. Obviously, with operators, with 5G, they're able to drive one gig to your handset. Uh, well, what will you do with one gig in your handset? Whatever you, you want. Question, yeah. Whatever you want. But if you also think about, like in the US market, we are seeing with the 5G introduction, operators are able to provide you know, broadband connection to underserved community much faster. Yes. Fiber rollout takes time. Yeah. So this is immediate benefit that we are seeing on the carrier and side. Close that digital divide, right? Closing that digital divide, yeah. serving uh, underserved communities. And we are also doing something very interesting here. You might have heard one of the announcements we made this week, Meraki. Meraki gateways now will have 5G. So you can think oh. about a Meraki branch popping up using 5G backhaul. It's amazing for small businesses. Now, let's talk a little bit about 
enterprises, what enterprises did with 4G, obviously you had your employees connected, but we had some niche deployment in mining where you did not have coverage. We did deploy 4G networks in the past, but it stayed as a niche. Now with 5G, number one, bringing that predictability, it's starting to get closer and closer to the business need that they have. Many of the physical space um, digitization needs a lot of people and machine to come together. And Wi-Fi itself often time comes short on predictable latencies. And this is where we see enterprise can start to consume 5G technology. But one of the key area here is how do we make operational simpler and more seamless between a Wi-Fi network and 5G network? Yeah. This is where we see the biggest opportunity. If we can simplify the adoption, simplify the operation, and make it seamless with Wi-Fi operation, it will have a big so, opportunity. So let's hold on that. But I did want to get back to use cases and verticals. So as you mentioned, LTE or you know, 4G is used widely in mining, manufacturing, warehousing, things like that. With 5G, do you expect the adoption to be within those verticals, or do you see broader use cases where we'd see it in a, in a, in a larger range of industries? It is going to take time. Uh, one of the reasons for cellular technology to get broader adoption in enterprise is device ecosystem. If you think about cellular phones, uh, every cell phone will have 5G. Yeah. But if you think about enterprise devices, what you use in enterprise, your laptop, your iPad, and then uh, all the sensors in the enterprise, it's going to take some time to get 5G on those device ecosystems. So we believe it is going to start in some niche verticals. Um, manufacturing has a lot of promises. Energy market have a lot of uh, promise. We also see a lot of interest from transportation industries. Yes. We believe this is where it will start. And then as it matures, most importantly, as it becomes simpler to consume, then you might see more broader adoption across many enterprises. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned transportation because I was at uh, Cisco Live in MIA and I visited the Port of Rotterdam, which is a big customer yes. of yours. And I know 5G is a big part of that deployment where they're trying to use it to be able to guide autonomous ships in Correct. eventually by 2030. So, uh, you know, that's the, to me that's a fascinating use case. Yeah. Now, I want to go back to the operational simplicity, right? Like, how does this get rolled up? Because historically, you know, when you think back to the early days of Wi-Fi, it was an overlay network. Yes. And, you know, and the WAN was, we just, we just love overlay networks, right? And so uh, it's fair to say that co network complexity is high today, and if 5G comes in as another overlay network, we're just going to drive complexity up. So, um, you know, what, how, do we, how does this get simplified? So it, it's so true. Every time we, uh, for convenience, we adopt a new technology in IT, and then we forget about operational complexity yeah. it brings in, and we layer on, layer on. That's and why network engineers is not such high demand. Um, <laughs> well, but yeah. we still have network engineers. Yeah, shortage, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so the way we, we should think about uh, how to drive this adoption, we have to think about designing in the enterprise integration from day one. You cannot it. do it after the fact. So what are some of the basic primitive? If you think about one of the biggest challenge in enterprise is creating common policy, identity, common segmentation. It took us a long time to get where we are. We cannot go back to it. So let's say you go and deploy a 5G private network, and then you have to use a different identity management system. Then you have to redesign your segmentation. Yeah. The ripple effect is yeah, and it's hard to keep in sync, and so one person's identity is different than you know on one network than the other. So yeah. Common identity is is going to be key. Yeah, and making sure that investment that enterprises made on their software defined LAN architecture, you can actually use the same architecture for both for Wi-Fi access as well as 5G access. The other area is going to be around visibility in enterprise networking. Problems are becoming complex, more things are getting connected. If we don't see something, we cannot simplify it. So we also think that the visibility of the infrastructure and application running on the infrastructure and experience of the end user and machine needs to become consistent across any access type. This is a very good starting point, but we cannot stop there. We also think that we have to think about the simplicity that you might get from a cloud operation model, if we can start to think about operating at scale, 
leveraging cloud could bring the ultimate simplicity to enterprise, both for Wi-Fi as well as 5G. Now how about security, how does that factor in here? Okay, security, we have to think from day one. Yeah. Obviously, another 5G, overlay. if it is another yeah. overlay, it's going to make our life more difficult. And we talked about IT staff and OT staff, shortage in the world. But when, when you look into the CISOs, they have severe shortage in skills and, oh, yeah. uh, and also There's literally hundreds of thousands of open jobs. Yeah, in the US alone, right? So Now, security, the progress that we have made, and it is a evolving progress that we are continuously making on, making your LAN infrastructure, wide area infrastructure, tied nicely with your zero trust architecture. When you think about your private network, let it be 4G or 5G, think about that design from get-go. If you don't start with the existing infrastructure, how you have secured your LAN access as well as Wi-Fi access, you have to design it in from get-go. And some of these integration points, you have to think about, if we can see things, if we can have identify who's going where, you're not gonna go wrong. But if you start with silos, it's going to make our life more and more difficult. All right, so you're talking the talk here. Yes. So tell me though, let's see if you can walk the walk. How is Cisco specifically helping its customers with this? Okay. Fantastic question, and I will also invite you to come and see it in action downstairs. Right. We are showing some of these demonstrations. Number one, on this area of how do we provide simpler operation. So one thing that we are doing uniquely differently, when you deploy a Cisco private 5G infrastructure, we use the same identity engine that you use for your Wi-Fi and LAN access. It's the same identity services engine used for 5G. Second, you will also see the segmentation that we use in LAN, the micro segmentation and the segmentation. Even for 5G, we are using the same. The third aspect, operation at scale. A little bit, you know, the same playbook as Meraki. We have hidden the entire complexity of 5G and cellular because we are running it from the cloud. It's managed from the cloud. And a lot of sophisticated software built and run on the cloud simplify your operation. Last but not least, every 5G deployment that we'll do, it is also going to be protected by umbrella. Um, and you will also see some demo around building the ecosystem surrounding us, how it works with robotics, how it works with manufacturing plants. Pre-validation of those machines in this environment is something that we feel very proud about, but most importantly, how we are bringing it to market. We are taking a managed service approach, where the managed service providers, like the ones that we announced this week, Entity is going to provide a managed service, taking all those operational complexity off enterprises. Yeah, I think great. In fact, I think managed service is a great opportunity uh, to help customers simplify their environments. And you know, there, we talked about the skills gap. Um, it's going to take a long time for your skills. So. Yeah. Uh, managed services can take a big burden off of companies that way. So you did mention some demos downstairs. Uh, should we go down and have a look at them? Yeah, we should go out right. and have a look. Let's yes, go do that. Let's see it in action. Thanks. So as promised, we're here down here on the floor of the Cisco booth at Mobile World Congress here. Uh, so what are we looking at here? So we're going to show, I talked about how do you simplify with the integration in enterprise, right? ICE integration, Thousand Eyes integration, security integration, and then we're going to sh show you some real life use cases. So I'll pass it to Ben. Ben, why don't you just walk through uh, what do you have to show? Absolutely. So um, ICE integration means that enterprises already have their policies that they use for their Wi Fi devices. They should not have to create new policies for their 5G devices. So Cisco's made it very easy with some, uh, some quick integrations with ICE. Uh, in 5G. With a couple clicks of the button. And for they, those who don't know ICE, that's your... Uh, so what ICE is the, uh, is the identity services engine. Okay. And that's Cisco's market leading policy management platform. Okay. So once, uh, once many enterprises have ICE already installed, they have policies, those policies can propagate out to the 5G network. So one thing that we can show real quick here is what happens is we're starting a, an actual data session. Um, there is an authentication that's happening in the cloud with a SIM card and a secondary authorization that's happening with ICE, and that is what's providing a policy to the 5G device. So secure segmentation, uh, uh, permit, deny policies, create them once, 
propagate them out to your 5G network. All right. Uh, so what we have, we can actually show that she has a, she should have a policy. And the great thing about those policies is they follow the user, right? So even in your roam and things like that, it stays with the user. That's right. So she, uh, that, that, that device that you saw that's having a, a session here, you can actually see it here. And then just to prove that this is her policy, her VLAN 896. And now if I quickly stop this and I start, he's got a different policy. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to uh, authenticate through the SIM, get a secondary authorization from ICE. There's the, uh, there's the policy. Now I just stopped her policy. He's got one here. So this is all happening in real time. And just again, the proof point will be in this Grafana dashboard. We'll see, we should see her session data start, uh, stopping and then his has started here. So this is all live happening in our lab. Uh, secure segmentation done through ICE using 5G devices. Cool. Yep. All right. And uh, what else can you show me here? I can show you Thousand Eyes. So Cisco has uh, is using Thousand Eyes integration, which I regard as the best internet monitoring, really the only internet monitoring tool out there. Right. We in fact, I find sometimes Thousand Eyes knows about outages before, like cloud outages before the cloud provider. And that's what and yeah. we, we want our service providers to have the best tools yeah. for as they're managing all of these 5G networks. We install these agents at critical points in the network, and then we're able to actually see, uh, we're actually able to run these tests and see um, jitter, let's see. Yeah, we're able to see jitter, latency, and packet loss over time in our 5G network. So that's great. So you showed me this stuff. Can you give me like a real life example of this here? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the demos that we have, we're partnering up with uh, Intel. Um, and we're, what we're showing are edge native apps. Edge native are mission critical applications that run at the edge, very latency intolerant. Uh, in this case, we have, this is a live feed from our lab where we are doing defect detection. So we have a camera that is trained on this assembly line and it is uh, picking up any sort of defect detection as it goes through the assembly line. So if we can zoom in on the actual interface, you'll see this camera is going to start to pick up, and we see this one is good. It gets, it gets greens across the board. This requires uh, processing at the edge, and it requires a 5G network to deliver that without, without delay. And this is your paper cups, but you can buy it at the car parts or, you know, any... You know, it grows any time of inventory, really. Yeah, right? yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this is just something that we can set up using the uh, the, the edge native apps from Intel and Cisco's uh, private 5G network. We actually also have Thousand Eyes installed uh, on this uh, on this here, so we can actually show that this is really cool. So if we scroll down, this is picking up uh, jitter and latency graphs from that uh, application. So a lot of a lot of uh, cross referencing here and uh, cross for our, for our demos. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thanks for showing me that. Uh, Thank you. It was great actually seeing a real live use case of this, so yeah. yeah, thanks. All right, well, that wraps up the Zcast. I hope you enjoyed uh, the demo at Cisco's booth. If you're a Mobile World Congress, stop by and have a look at what they're doing. Uh, other than that, though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.